Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Homecoming here at the Comet Crater, where the Comets are playing host to the Cavaliers of Culver. I'm Blair Zimmerman, joined tonight by Alex Korn. Alex, yep. how you doing? Doing okay. It's nice, cool football weather, finally. Yeah, it's finally <laughs> football weather. I was reading on Facebook the other day. It said temperature done dropped from 90 to 55 like I passed a state trooper. <laughs> and that's exactly what it did. <laughs> yep. The guys have some nice, cool weather here tonight. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and no rain this time. No rain. The, uh, the field ought to be pretty firmed up. And uh, we're here carrying the excitement of uh, the cast in soccer team mm -hmm. uh, winning HNAC last night. Nice. So uh, there's a lot of good energy in the crowd. Hoping for some good football tonight. Mm -hmm. And I know uh, <coughs> Culver's had some good wins this season. I watched them uh, scrimmage over at Manchester University over the summer. Mm -hmm. They were scrimmaging against uh, Rensselaer Central, who is a perennial powerhouse in two-way over in Rensselaer, Indiana. And uh, Rensselaer looked... Much more impressive, but uh, you'll see Culver here tonight in that T backfield that they ran last year. Uh, very deceptive. They've had a lot of returning players, so they're just getting better at it. Um, of course, Coach Zayner spent some time at Rochester, did pretty well there, and then bumped over to Culver. Um, defensively, I know they run a 4 2 5, and Ooh. I think that'll give Kasson some fits. Uh, it's a new alignment that they haven't seen. Right. They've typically seen the 4 3. Um, I think LaVille ran a 3-4 defense, so it's a, a new alignment, and we'll look forward to see how Landon adjusts as the quarterback. Well, and of course, numbers are always against us here. Mm -hmm. um, Coach Slocum said today at the uh, homecoming pep rally that uh, we're dressing 15 tonight, so mm. it's just it's yep. not getting any easier. Uh, the guys all out there, if you notice the pink peeking out from underneath the red jersey, mm -hmm. they're not clashing on purpose. They are standing in <laughs> solidarity with Sam Shanelob, who uh, got a cancer diagnosis here oh. several weeks back. And, um, yeah, they're, they're kind of playing oh. for Mama Sam tonight. Hopefully she pulls through and has a speedy recovery. Yeah, it's, looking, it's a good prognosis, so we're very thankful for that. Yep. And we've got Aiden Sarver here uh, working his way across the field. He did have that ACL repaired, and yep. so... Uh, we have high hopes that he'll be ready to compete come track season. Okay, so he's for I'm sure out of that, wrestling. I'm thinking that it's, uh, you know, he's going to work hard on his rehabilitation, yeah. and you know, nobody's going to say no, but I'm going to say probably not likely. Okay. But hey, I'm not a medical professional. <laughs> I if didn't you, even stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night. If you were, you probably wouldn't be up here, right? Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, probably not. <laughs> I see a lot of familiar faces here as it's homecoming night. Oh, absolutely. So many alumni mm -hmm. uh, are coming out here to support the comments. It's it's really great. And then there's, you know, quite a few people made the drive from over Culver Way. So yep, yep. It's always good when there's a couple of full stands. Yep. Now, of course, Caston's last game was on last Saturday due to postpone, weather postponement. Um, and they lost a tough one to North White, um, a game that they had... They were, they had, they really felt good about that game mm -hmm. going into it. And um, I talked to some of the players, and they feel like if, if everything could have stayed on Friday night, they had good momentum going, mm -hmm. they, they were in the game. And then a couple of the guys said, you know, when Saturday got around there, we got back out there. Just wasn't was, in the right, right mentality. Right, everybody, you know, Saturday's film day. Yeah. And so it, uh, they, they just, didn't show up to play. In fact, I feel like that. And I remember seeing that's what Sam Smith said to the paper. Mm -hmm. You know, we just didn't come to play, and yeah. so it didn't happen. Well, that's a shame. That was probably the game they had circled on the schedule. Um, of course, Culver tonight at Winnemac next week, which we won't be at, and then we'll be back here for Knox. Right, but fear not, uh, RTC fans, if you're wanting to watch the comments, uh, we won't be there, Alex and I, but Winnemac is an RTC school, yep. so you can anticipate seeing that yep. on RTC4.com. And then depending on the sectional draw, who knows where we'll be. Hopefully not up up there by Michigan at Fremont, Indiana. <laughs> yeah, the sectional draw can do some crazy <laughs> things to your schedule. So it looks like Culver is kicking off. We have a fairly brisk wind standing out the Stars and Stripes over here mm -hmm. in the south, so 
I'd guess that probably 13 to 15 miles an hour mm -hmm. north wind. Uh, so Culver is kicking into the wind. We'll have to see how that affects things. Now I see Hunter Schaefer out there on the field. Are they oh, letting him? Oh, ladies and gentlemen, I actually forgot about this. Yes, we, uh, we have one very special play set up for tonight, uh, as it is also Hunter Schaefer's senior year. They're going to give Hunter Schaefer an opportunity as team captain to run yep. in the ball. Well, this is the moment that makes high school sports truly great. Absolutely. <laughs> and we'll have the we'll have the comments line doing some blocking for him yep. as he makes his way across the 35. There's the 40. Some, some good blocking over yeah. here on the close side of the field as he crosses the 50. There's the 40. He's pushing across the 30. You know, I think this is probably the most important touchdown in Caston football history, really. Yeah, what this means to that young man mm -hmm. out there is just incredible. There was a great write-up in the Ferris Tribune, uh, in today's Ferris Tribune, as a matter of fact, about Hunter Shane Love and Hunter Schaefer. Mm -hmm. And they're in the wheelchair and uh, it's things like this. Uh, whenever I hear a student who's only ever gone to cast and mm -hmm. complain about the small school atmosphere, they just don't understand yeah. that things like that tend not to happen. Yep. I'm not going to say don't happen, tend not to happen yep. um, for or in bigger schools. Yeah, that's. It's just a great moment, and I think uh, someone from RTC needs to share that to ESPN. That might make a absolutely make the cut. Absolutely, the smile on his face—I mm -hmm. can see it from here. I'm not crying, Alex. You're crying. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when I was going to school here, playing. He was Hunter was here, and I mean, his family's been the most dedicated family too. Casting athletics more so than anyone else has. Absolutely. So. Uh, that young man is involved, I think, every season. Yep. I'm, not sure, I'm not sure if he's involved with baseball. So I, I think know. he is. Um, but, yeah, he's involved with basketball. Uh, he brings the game ball out on the field mm -hmm. and on the court every every game nearly. Mm -hmm. uh, he's, he's, a real, he's a special guy and, and uh, really, really glad mm -hmm. to see that happen yep. for him. I remember last season, Coach Zayner actually came to uh, Coach Slocum after that game at Culver and offered, you know, if you wanted to do this next year, I'd gladly do it. And homecoming, it was just the perfect. Absolutely. But here is the opening kick. And Caught here, there by number uh, 30. Tim Blake Lee Thompson. kicking off. He's the new kicker, it looked like. Now, I don't know if he kicks Saturday. I am. Not sure. Again, I was, uh, especially with things getting postponed to Saturday, I was I was uh, up at Culver Military Academy nice. with cross country. And, and that's a beautiful school. And oh, that's, yeah. that's an amazing campus. I mean, for high school, it's $50,000 a year to go there. <laughs> You'd expect it to be. Well, and there's a reason <laughs> it looks like a college campus. Yeah. So here we have Culver lining up in that T formation. I'd expect to see a lot of trap out of their big fullback there. And here's the power play. And Jesse Rockwolf managing to run him out of bounds there on the Comets, 40. That was number 20, Jalen King, sophomore running the football. Here again, T formation. And there's the trap play. And Kasson's there, it looked like Duvall, Smith. 
Second down for the Cavaliers. have number five here as quarterback Tucker Fisher only a sophomore and again there's that power play off the right side he was a quarterback last year as a freshman you see a lot of young talent here on Culver's roster yeah looking through there I, they've got what half of a line of seniors it looks like I count eight seniors and that'll draw Kasson That'll draw Kasson off sides. And even worse, that's a Cavaliers first down. Yep. It's <coughs> and there again. Running that power play off the right tackle, and yeah, I see a flag flying. Yeah. Now, the last time we were out here, Kasson had quite a few penalties against him. That was against Laville, I believe. Right. But was that a block in the back? Yep. There's that power play off the other side. And he'll be in the end zone. Good blocking there by numbers 33 and 62. And that's a Cavaliers touchdown. Is that there? Was that number 40 ran that in? Yep. He's a, it's a senior Carter Stevens. He's a big fella. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he, he had some wheels. I wouldn't expect a guy that big to move mm -hmm. as quick as he did. I guess Culver might not have a kicker. We'll go for two. And they run it again. And there's two more on the board. Well, John Harrell was calling this, I think, if I'm remembering correctly, something like a 45 17 spread tonight. Mm -hmm. So. See, Culver's had. They had an impressive victory over West Central, 44-0. They beat Winnemac last week. Wow. Yeah, they've uh, they've done pretty well. And again, the roster uh, appears to be fairly young and up and coming, so I think the future of football in, over in Culver, Indiana, is looking pretty good. And then when you look at their sectional, I would say it's between them and Judson as the favorites to come out of that one. But well, Judson was a rough night of football mm -hmm. for the Comets. Yep. Of course, Culver and Judson play each other week one, so they've got a lot of growth over the season. All right, we got Hickle and Smith deep. That's. Now we saw number five kind of. Squib kick it last time and see if he'll put it down the field. Yeah, I was kind of surprised with the shortness of that kick when he knew what the play was. Mm -hmm. Smith there messed up a little bit yep. on that kickoff return. His knee was down when he picked it up. It's going to put the Comets back at their own 22-yard mm -hmm. line or so. Now see how Kastner adjusts to that 4-2-5. Of course, four linemen, two interior linebackers, and then five defensive backs. You would think the alignment alone would help them with the passing game of Kastens. Yeah. 
Short slip pass. And take we have it a down. face mask. Could be that that was received by Rockwolf. He was taking down, down clear back at the 20 mm -hmm. yard line. See number 10 there doing a great job. Donovan Zayaja. Yeah, Zaya just, but that was a face mask penalty against the Cavs, so mm -hmm. it's going to... They walk it. him up five, and that'll be an automatic first down. Smith cutting Making over. some moves. Oh, he's, he's got a first down. Broke a couple tackles. Take it down to the 40-yard line. I think using his ability and quickness on the outside is a strength that this offense needs to rely more on than other, the other one that we've talked about in many weeks is the legs of Landon right. running him around. I mean, they were driving up and down on Pioneer's varsity with him scrambling around and making plays. Well, that's something that, again, when I'm in here in the weight room through the summer, and and even in the spring, looking forward, looking towards the mm -hmm. fall, I I talk to these guys all the time, and I keep trying to impress upon them that having that speed is just kind of key. Mm -hmm. Pass over Rock Wolf. There's the senior, Zayaja again. Boy, uh, number 10 there, you know, Zayaja and number 33, Jake Fisher, they went <laughs> helmet to helmet trying to get Rockwolf down. Uh, but anyway, talking about that athleticism and that speed, I, I'm trying to convince the entire line that everybody can use that. Yeah. Certainly. Of course, you know, they dismiss it because it's coming from a running coach and they think I'm just trying to recruit to the cross country <laughs> program. But. We have Schaefer in the gun. We have a delay of game. Look like Landon was, oh, we have a timeout. Ah, Comet's timeout. Well, in that case, we're gonna take a moment here, step away for a word from our sponsors. You're watching Comets and Cavs, ba uh, not basketball, football, <laughs> here on Casting TV on RTC TV4. Neighbors help each other. It's how our community works. And it's how we do business at RTC. We know you count on us for fiber internet. Hi, I'm John Oliver with some great news if you're shopping for a pre-owned F-150 or Ford Escape. Two of America's best-selling vehicles, and right now we have an incredible lineup to choose from. These are all local trades, so the history is no mystery. No Canadian units here. F-150s and Escapes, all priced to sell, all Oliver Ford Lincoln certified. So get more for your money and more for your trade with Oliver Ford Lincoln in Plymouth. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Not quite four minutes gone here in the first quarter here at the Cast and Homecoming where the Cavaliers have an early 8 nothing lead. Just back from timeout. A little bit of technical difficulties here. Yeah, the... it was the loose nut on the keyboard. <laughs> we have that power play. Sam Smith diving through for a hard-fought yard or two. Mm -hmm. Now, in a 4-2-5 defense, you're going to see Culver's ends come down hard. So if they see their tackle that they're lined up on take a down step, they're going to try to stay tight to him coming down the line of scrimmage, which makes that kick out block difficult for the pulling lineman, which is what we saw there. Right. We have trips left. And there's oh. Schaefer run. 
Yeah, Schaefer's line collapsed on yeah. him there a little bit. He had to take off running and try to get away from that. His number 30 sophomore, Blake Thompson, chasing him down. It looks like we have the punter in. 16, Blake Hammond will punt for the Comets. Who we have back here, number 24, Damian Sullivan. Now, Kasson's had a little bit of trouble covering the punt team. And right there, he, Sullivan just Thanks. avoiding three defenders. Yep. Gavin Hickel managing to tie him up, though, and take him down. So Cavs are going to take it on their own 35 here. Now, last time we saw him run a quasi no huddle where they all looked over to the coach, looked at the wristband. They weren't in a hurry per se. They just didn't huddle up. You see they're kind of slow walking up to the line, so they're not in any hurry. There's the trap play. Shut down right at the line of scrimmage. Mm -hmm. Notice how many white jerseys run fire downfield or they, they cut off the linebackers and the safeties. Because in the trap play, it's so quick, you're not worried about the defensive linemen making the play. Right. And there's that power play off the right side. Jalen King again. Got about five yards of that. I imagine he'll have somewhere around 20 <laughs> carries tonight. Yeah, they've gotten a lot of mileage off of, well, I say a lot. I mean, we're, <laughs> we're early in the game, but compared to the total. Mm -hmm. We have offsides on the defense. I didn't I get had, a good look. Yeah, I didn't get a good look. I'm not sure what. Uh, he looks like he's calling it against Cavs. So the Cavaliers go back to their original line. We got a third and long. I want to cut a pass plays or in. The playbook here for Culver, of course, with all your wide receivers within, you know, a 10-yard space, you know, it's hard to get long down the field passes. I would expect some kind of waggle play, quarterbacks attacking the flank. Or they just run that power play again. Yeah, it looks like he got it to about the 42-43 yard line. Now you're close. Do you go for it here on fourth and? Looking at the success that the Cavs offense has had, yeah. <laughs> uh, we've had a couple of stop on the lines, but. Imagine it'll be that power play. Now he's doing a hard count. Get Try to play. get the defense yep. to jump. Now we're going to get. Hear him yelling two. And there it is, the power play. And I think Sam and Duvall's got him. Sam Duvall stopping him. Turnover on downs there. That might be one of Kasson's best plays this season so far. <coughs> now they're, they have the ball at the 40. Well, I mean, Four. you know, they kind of, your suggestion was something we haven't seen. They didn't <laughs> do that. I mean, if you're going to keep running the same couple of plays, it doesn't take long. Yep, to catch on to them. We, we saw that up in Triton when those uh, little slant passes yep. were getting picked off from, yep. uh, from Landon. So. Oh. Number 33 there with pretty good coverage considering Hunter's. Uh, Seemed like he had a whole lot of uh, 
helmet grabbing going on well. there, though. <laughs> Of course, with with the way that the rules keep changing in football, mm -hmm. you know. Now I think the rule, if I remember it correctly, in high school here in Indiana, um, you can grab on to the receiver all up and down the field until the ball is out of the quarterback's hands. There's the outside sweep play. We found a hole. He broke free. Yep. He's going. He's still going. What a great yep. play. Clear down to the 15 yep. yard line. That was a big play. Yep. If I was. If he could have broken one more tackle, he would have been in the end zone. If I was uh, in Coach Slocum's ear right now, I'd say, go ahead and run it again. <laughs> That's um, an old coaching philosophy I've heard over the years is we're going to run the same play until you stop it. <laughs> that just worked against Culver in a bad <laughs> way though. Yeah, maybe they'll run a different play now that Cass knows how to stop it. I'm going to throw it up to Shane Lobb. Oh. And he called the pass interference there. So that'll give him seven yards. So now it's a first and goal. First and goal to go for the comments. Passed over to. Is that Rock Wolf? Oh, uh, the 86. Garrison Hickel? Oh, no. I could have sworn that I was a four <laughs> at the end of that. The view angle there on that was not spectacular from where we're standing. I'll tell you, Landon had about two seconds to throw that ball. So Culver's bringing pressure, and they're doing a good job at it. How great would it be for casting a type of football game right here? That'd be amazing. Gonna give it to Smith. That's he's the got right it. play, and that is a touchdown. Alex, this may be the well. I don't remember back to Week One against West Central. I was gonna say this might be the first first quarter touchdown of the of the season, but I think that we had one at, at the West Central game. Let's see what Coach Slocum dialed up here. Might want to look for that sweet play again with Smith. That's what I was thinking. Oh, they're going for a pass. Oh, not quite complete on that. Even still, six to eight, we'll take it. Yep. <clears throat> and, you know, I always try to do we always try to do our due diligence mm -hmm. and, and look at the projections and look at what we've seen in the season. But mm -hmm. it's, you know, something I was telling my runners here this past week. Uh, no team is unbeatable. Right. And no victory is guaranteed. Yep. And every athlete and every team in every sport has to always keep that in mind. Yep. Uh, that's why we have the David and Goliath stories. Mm -hmm. Um why the Giants beat the Patriots. <laughs> I think uh, the weakness here for Culver is they practice running that T formation and just running the ball, running the ball. You don't have the time to practice your pass defense. So we're seeing, I would expect, as the game goes on, Kasten to actually su see success in passing the ball. Right. Culver is used to defending the run so well. Now, early, 
we've seen Smith on the outside. Right. But of course, Culver doesn't practice against a spread offense every week. So right. They might be a little bit rusty and unrefined in certain aspects. Pretty flat kickoff. Got a little bit of a wacky bounce on it there. Yeah, it was uh, number 24. Damian Sullivan taken down just north of the 30 yard line. See if Culver still relies on that uh, power play or if they're going to break something else out. Now I know, so I've seen their playbook. <laughs> Coach Zayner shared it with me. They have a couple of really good counter plays based off that power play. And there we see it. They have a good counter play where the quarterback's going to keep the football and roll off. As you come in to defend the power play, the quarterback's just going to keep it. Right. A little bit like the option that we saw with Yep, a little bit similar Judson to that. And And here it is, a pass play. And that pass was completed to number 80. You see uh, 87 there, Rock Wolf, was used to the coming down to that power play, and it kind of fooled him a little bit to see right. the quarterback. I tell you, we don't have the sizes here for Culver's team, but I would suspect number five of the quarterbacks, probably around six foot to six three range. Yeah, there it's a stout looking line. Yeah. There's that power play again. And they fumbled it. Fumbled again. Managed to cover it up off that second fumble. We get a second and twelve here. Here's we're entering the final two minutes of quarter number one. And what's so far shaping up to be a pretty good football game. Took about a third of the Comets line mm -hmm. to bring number 40 down yeah, I there. Wish, I wish we had his weight on here. I'd, I'd suspect between 225 and 240. He's a, he's a big boy. And I imagine quite a bit of that is muscle mass. Well, the way he just drug for the Comets <laughs> line, I'd say so. His, his jersey didn't uh, survive that tackle so well. <laughs> They're going to keep running him. Under a minute here in the first. Cavs look to be at second and about six. You can be shocked if we see that power play again. Not even a <laughs> little bit. There it is. It's 24 out. The punt returner and kick returner in that time. Sullivan Damian Sullivan around the outside. Is that Hickel with the stop? Was Gavin Hickel with that stop? First and goal, though. And there's power play the other way. And he's dragging half the defense into the end zone. And across the line. <laughs> I 
thinking power left for the two point play. Wow, surprise. <laughs> and you're getting what? Eight yards run off that yep. particular play. Maybe even 12 or 15, it seems like. If it ain't broke, don't fix yep, it. Yep, yep. Run it until they stop it. We'll run it until they stop it every time, yeah. yeah. Because one stop could be a fluke, yep. uh, you know. You know, back to that, um, we're talking about Culver defending the run all season because that's what their offense does. I remember for a long time that was Pioneer's weakness is when they ran wing T with Johnson and then Central Catholic came in and they were throwing the ball over the field. It gave them such bad fits. I mean, they would right. lose most of the time. So you, you introduce something new into your environment and you kind of get a shock a little bit. Right. It is such a... You have such a limited time to work yep. with your athletes yep. in high school. Yep. Uh, that's something. Uh, just some of the things mm -hmm. with the cross country program, some some changes that we've made along mm -hmm. the way, so that we can focus on the way we want to do our yep. running training. And they're like, "Well, but coach, we we don't do this anymore. We don't do this anymore." I said, "And and I've had to tell them, but you know to do those things." Mm -hmm. uh, so we. If we're not going to have two a days that yeah. are three and four hours long, yeah. you guys have to do some of this on your own. And football is just the same way. This is a little bit better of a kick. Did you see that waggle, or was I imagining things? <laughs> oh, and Hickles oh. down the out. Staggered yeah, forward. Great, great return. Wow. Great return from our left tackle, Gavin Hickle, here. Returned it clear up to the Cavs about 45-yard line. Uh, but, yeah. So if you've got two or th maybe three, f I, I don't know. I, I don't think that too many people get away with four-hour practices every day. <laughs> you know, you there's only so much you can do. Right. And you've got to work on your offense. Yep, yep. Because if you're not putting points on the board. What's, yeah. So your defense gets used mm -hmm. to defending against your offense. Yep. Or once you get injured down to the point where you've only got 15 people, your yeah. defense gets used to defending against the junior high, and that was Rockwolf. See, Coach Slocum <laughs> ripped his headset off real quick. One thing I do got to say, you're talking about all these athletes playing multiple sports and you just don't have time. One great thing that Kasson is doing is all the coaches are on the same page, allowing, allowing so much time for each sport and kind of oh. sharing the athletes. But you go to some of these bigger schools and it's, nope, we need our athlete oh, this time. You can't get him, you know. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, we've had we've had coaches come in from bigger schools. That have that mentality. They have that mentality, and it is such a struggle. And because they're used to, in the bigger schools, you'll have a football player who only does football. Yeah, or, or might do another sport but clearly be committed more to football. Right, right. It's just something that cross-trains for football, and that's that. Yeah. And so you get a coach who's used to – single sport year round athletes yeah. you know or athletes who they do this sport for their mm -hmm. school in this season and then in the off season they're playing AAU or travel yep. league whatever yep. it is and um, yeah they're not used to having to share athletes right. and it it's a real hassle and it's a it's a struggle for the athlete too who's committed to their school yeah um, yeah we we've, we've I've had this this discussion at length <laughs> with some of my athletes and but, yeah, by and large, uh, Coach Sanchez and I, with uh, we've shared mm -hmm. several soccer players yep. over the last several seasons. Yep. And uh, it's critical. It's critical to make sure the kids are trained well yep. but aren't overtrained because right. the human body only has so much to give. Yep, yep. And you only have so much time in a day. You can only, you know, like you said, work at a young athlete so much. Right. Here we have great field position for the Comets to start the second quarter. Oh, and they didn't get that snap off in time. Called with the delay a game. And you're in a really good game here, and you're uh, Sokum saved it, took a timeout. That's not what you see when a 
coming out of a end of the quarter and yeah open up with a delay potential delay game have to take a timeout yeah well we uh we're gonna take this opportunity to step away for a word from our sponsors hopefully with fewer technical difficulties this time stay <laughs> tuned to cast and tv on rtc tv4 simplify your banking with a simply free checking account from first federal savings bank at First Federal Savings Bank, we appreciate your referrals. Refer your friends to open a Simply Free checking account. When your friend opens a checking account, you can both receive a free gift. It's easy as one, two, three. Simply Free checking from First Federal Savings Bank, a simpler way to bank. And remember, we don't want to be the biggest bank, just the best bank. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So we get set, ready to play. The officials are going to talk to each other. Got to discuss what we're doing with that canary that flew right before the timeout. <laughs> Oh, football wasn't placed quite right. Now that's the official's fault there. No <laughs> fault on the teams. Here we're going to run that sweet play. Ooh, Cover was ready for it. Yep, but Smith still gets eight or nine yards. Seven yards. Every time I see a play like that, I, I miss having Sam Smith run for me. Yep, yep. That cut, you see him, it just seems like it's so natural for him running at full speed, and then you read the block ahead of you, and he just makes that cut so well. You can tell he's a naturally agile young man. Oh, yeah. And he can accelerate quickly going from a standstill to just about a full-on sprint real quick. They're going to... Throw it out to Jesse, but looks oh, like no, they, they got a yard or two. And, of course, you're going to go for it with the I, season you're having. You're on the good side of the, the field here. It's only two yards. No, uh, are we going to measure? No, we have an injury timeout. Oh, boy, uh -oh. that's Rock Wolf down. Yeah, Rock Wolf's still down. Well, officials are calling a timeout. We'll step back. Stay tuned. You're watching Comets and Cavaliers football on Casted TV on RTC TV4. Simplify your banking with a Simply Free checking account from First Federal Savings Bank. All it takes is $50 to open the account with no minimum balance and no monthly service fees. For a limited time, you will also receive a free gift just for opening the account. And with Instant Issue, we can give you a debit card right when you open your account, giving you immediate access to your funds. Simply Free Checking from First Federal Savings Bank, a simpler way to bank. And remember, we don't want to be the biggest bank, just the best bank. At First Federal Savings Bank, we enjoy helping first-time homebuyers. And with our premier first-time homebuyer program, there's no private mortgage insurance cost. Only as little as 5% down is required for this program. Talk with one of our experienced mortgage lenders and let us help you purchase your first home. And remember, we don't want to be the biggest bank, just the best bank. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We've got Jesse Rockwolf on his feet. He was he had just received a pass in the last play before the uh, timeout there. He's limping pretty good. He is walking under his own power. Mm -hmm. They might be able to get that loosened up and worked out. He's a pretty important uh, key to the this team as a whole, not just offensively as a wide receiver, but he might be one of their uh, best defensive backs. All right, once again, fourth and two. Wonder if you give it to Sam Smith on the power play or on the sweep. Mm 
Oh, and he gets tied up in the backfield. What a heartbreaker for Cummins. That was number 33, Jake Fisher there. Tell you, it was working until they stop it. <laughs> now I wonder who replaces Jesse here on defense. So he was playing the single high safety spot here in Coach Ulrich's defense. Which makes me wonder if Corver might try to do a play action play again and take another deep shot. Yep, and he got a lot of open guys. There's 24 oh, and that man, that's gonna go all the way. Did I tell you or did I tell you? You called that one. <laughs> That's Damian Sullivan. Yep. With Jesse there, you get an experienced defensive back that has been trained over the years to stay back on that and be the deep defender. But I think our freshman was in there. and I didn't catch the number that was back there. I was trying to see it, and then pass was up. And mm -hmm. You doing power left again? No, you pass it. That is incomplete. That was stopped by Landon Schaefer. Now I imagine here, you don't try to kick at the hickle again. <laughs> but then the other guys Sam Smith on the other side. Right. So. I'm going to guess maybe don't put quite so much on your kid. <laughs> well, if Kasson's going to keep returning it to the Cavalier side of the 50, you'd be better off just kicking it out of bounds because that would start <clears throat> casting off at their 40. Oh, yeah. I see Rock Wolf out there. That's good. We're keeping those ankles and legs warm. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, somebody's twisted an ankle or two. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I found that mm -hmm. sitting down and just letting it stiffen up yeah, is let, about let the, the worst thing. Up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You have to tie that shoe tighter and go out there and keep working it. Oh, no. They went ahead and still put a boot on it. Send it right to Sam Smith. He's got the outside. We have a flag coming. Was that a uh, was that a ta tackle leading with the helmet? I mean, I, that was a solid hit that stopped mm -hmm. him. Oh, holding against the Comets. Hold back one the 30. Mm. Now might be a good time to try those uh, slant passes because yeah. they're playing the sweep hard.
and the concession stand. He's the concession stand. He's decided the concession stand, please. We need a nurse, a doctor, or some medical help, please, at the concession stand. Some, uh, oh, we've had not uh, good news. Yeah, somebody collapsed over by concession stand. It's off field emergency. Kind of surprised that you keep the game going. But the officials aren't. Well, that's a, a low one. Runner. You can call that pass interference. Pass interference. On the defense, yep. They're gonna lock up number 10 one-on-one -on, -one on Schaefer all night. I wouldn't hesitate at all just to keep it, keep going to that pass. But yeah, I mean, if he's gonna keep. Well, now you have Hunter in the slot here. They're gonna look right to him. Oh, we got have a flag. A roughing the passer maybe, number seven. Coach Zayner's taking him out, so I'm guessing he he saw it. Oh, there's another flag thrown over by the sideline. I don't know if. Well, that'll be an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. My guess is roughing the passer. And then talking to the ref yep. as you're on your yep. way by. That's that's never a good idea. Good call, you called that one. Yep. Well, then that other sportsman Man, that's, that'll walk that's gonna way That's going to way down. So that roughing the passer gets thrown on at the end of the reception and then plus an additional 15 at the end of the play. Yeah, if it was the player bad mouthing the ref on his way past, you know Coach Zader's not happy about that. Because <laughs> yep. in my mind, and I could be wrong, I am frequently, in my mind, a coach who offers what we did for uh, Hunter Schaefer is also a coach who's not going to put up with unsportsmanlike. Yep, yep. Uh, and the IS, IS, yeah. yeah, the Indiana State governing yep. body. Let's go with that, that acronym. <laughs> yes. Uh, they're huge on sportsmanship. We have anyway, another I mean. flag here. Another unsportsmanlike. Pass interference. Oh. Now, if they're going to keep giving us yards on pass yeah. interference, might as well keep passing all night long. Just, just let them give you penalties <laughs> clear to the end zone. Man, this entire drive has been penalties. Oh, yeah. I mean, the chain gang's moving again. First down, comments. I don't know how to feel about this. This is like using cheat codes in a video <laughs> game. We, we were down here on the 30, and now... Is that Swall and they Hold on the play, they're fighting for it on the ground. We'll see who gets it. Oh man. Culver's gonna give you almost the entire football wow, field penalties. They cover up a I'm sure that's a Burning Coach Slocum. A 
again, Cover Wow, that there's that play. power play. And that's big number 40 there. Wow. With a he full, full head of steam. I think that that's going to be a uh, an yeah. illegal tackle, I think, on the Comets. Face mask against the Yeah, mm. face mask. Of course, they're going to stick with that power play. Yeah. If they I mean, broke, don't fix it. Nope. Tackled, <laughs> tackle was so hard. Landon Schaefer got like <laughs> leapfrogged over the top of it. Now, Hammer is a play in their playbook. Well, there's another Cavaliers yep. first down on the 18 yard line, it looks like. 46 on the carry. Get Meyer. Football resting at the 18 yard line. First down for the Cavaliers. And that might yeah. be all the way in. Yep. It is. Yeah, the Comet's not able to stop at that time, I don't think. <laughs> Seven fifty left here in this half. The Cavs have pushed this out to a thirty yep. to six lead. Yep. Halftime show today. Uh, tonight's homecoming, yeah. so we should have the uh, homecoming court presented, and so we'll keep the cameras rolling for uh, you folks at home, and we'll keep our big mouths closed. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> we we will probably switch over to the shotgun mic up on the uh, up on the camera, <laughs> or hang my headset out the window mm -hmm. there. Smith and Hickle deep for the kickoff return again. Oof, bad and bounce on that one. Smith Between picks Hickle's it up. Leg. Finds a small we're hole. Have, we're gonna have an illegal chop block there. Sam Smith, 
Yep, block below the waist. So we're both both flags, two different officials see the same penalty mm -hmm. or yep. okay. Now in the pros that's a legal block. But we're not there yet. <laughs> right. Well and you know, there's a lot of things. Again, that the ever evolving game of football. <laughs> my father in law who watches so much more football than mm -hmm. I ever will. If he never <laughs> watched another football game, I wouldn't be able to catch up to the hours of football that he's watched across his lifetime. And uh Colts game a couple weeks ago. It was just there was a uh, illegal use of the helmet mm -hmm. and he's like, What was that call? <laughs> My brother-in-law said last week, he's like, it's because professional football anymore. So you don't yep, even know what it don't is. Know. Uh, yeah, football well, and the world's changing quick. Oh, yeah. We saw, see the athletic director for casting running through the back of the end zone over there. I'm guessing he's grabbing Culver's athletic trainer. Could be. Yeah, we had uh, a, what they said is that somebody collapsed over by the concession stand, mm. the... Uh, EMTs are over there, but I don't have any further update than that. And Landon's going to run. Well, he didn't have a lot of choice there. Well, he can, can get he the angle. Got some blocking going on for him. And he's still in bounds. Oh, that might be a first down. Chain's going to move. Looks like maybe. Chains are moving. Wow. It's a lot of running, but. <laughs> that just goes back to that athleticism of that young man. Mm -hmm. When his line dissolved and he had to scramble out of nowhere and manages to pull first down out mm -hmm. of it. Smith breaking. We'll get a couple. They're going to run the option. And Schaefer's going to get close to a first down. Use it, using his legs, he uh, seems to be when this offense is at its best. Yeah. So about third and three on that. Here's the option play again. A little Smith's flea got a flicker. Bit of open space. Oh, 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 oh. How far is he going to go? And he's got a cutback lane. Oh, and he oh. fumbles. Oh. I'll tell you, he really is. I saw him punch the ground there a couple times. He is frustrated beyond all belief on that. There are a couple of uh, horse collars on that. Yep, but yep.
wonder if they take another deep shot or just run the power play. Yep, there's the power. Got a pretty good lead. I wonder five minutes left here until halftime. Now it's how many points until you get a running clock? Uh, was it 35? 35? You take a week off and you forget the rules already. <laughs> well, that goes back to that evolution of the game, too. <laughs> They're power the other way. Out of bounds. Oh, and that's going to be against Jesse. Comets fans not happy mm -hmm. down here uh, because that horse collar that didn't get called on the Smith fumble. And then you have a 15 yard personal foul here. Tell you what started off as a really good game has gotten uh, penalty ridden and it, just when it looks like so the energy's dying down though it just you have a couple of great plays it really re-energizes things and then you know uh, and the comments here they're they're playing hard it looks like out of right now out of frustration mm -hmm. off of that fumble. Yep. Uh, but you, you've got to play smart while you're playing yep. hard. You, yep. you can't just get angry and... Ladies and gentlemen, yep. we have been asked to announce that you please stay in your seats. Do not get out of your seats and go wander around. They are bringing in medical equipment for the problem we have. Please stay in your seats and stay away from the end of the football field. Stay in your seats. We thank you for your cooperation. Ooh, wow. An option play, or a uh, counter play, and <laughs> looked like he about took his own quarterback's <laughs> hat off. See here, number 10 is now playing quarterback. Coach Zayner must have uh, told number five he's Good to take the rest of the night off. And King back in the end zone for the Cavaliers. every time for the two-point conversion, I believe. And they've been successful all but one, I right think. Up.
A little under two minutes left here in the half. Mm -hmm. Smith deep again. Steve is uh, texting me some scores here as Smith returns this kickoff. It's like he might have gotten tangled up there with his own blockers. Mm -hmm. Northfield is uh, beating Rochester at halftime 25 to 14. Knox is Knox is up one point over Pioneer, seven to six here with wow. seven minutes left in the half. Tell you, that must be an exciting game over there. And it's sportsmanlike against the Comets. There's been a lot of penalties here in this uh, game. We've got trips. We've got a minute 43 left in half, the first half. going to look to Shane Lobb. Yeah, it passes incomplete. Yep. No free yards off of pass interference in that one. Nope. It's been a while since we've had a clean play, it seems like. Again, comments, trips left. Schaefer passing to, oh, oh man. my. That was uh, number nine, Tim Lee. And uh, did a somersault on that tackle. And a timeout by Culver. I wonder if they're trying to get the ball back for another, if they get another touchdown, they'll get the 35 point rule. Could be, well, whatever their plan is, we're gonna leave them here for a minute to uh, talk their strategy. Stay tuned, you're watching Comets and Cavaliers football on Cast and TV on RTC TV4. First Federal Savings Bank has provided mortgage loans for over 50 years, and now we're offering commercial lending. Are you looking to purchase commercial real estate, equipment, or open a business line of credit? First Federal Savings Bank is your locally owned community bank for all your business banking needs. Contact Lindy Breeden, our business lending expert, to take the worry out of your business banking. And remember, we don't want to be the biggest bank, just the best bank. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Teams working on breaking huddles here with 124 left in the half. And as you can see there, Cavaliers have 38, Comets sitting on six. Oh. And Culver took their first time out here of the half. I can only imagine you're doing that because you're trying to get a stop and get the ball back. So we're going, looks like trips to the right. Well, Comets are at third and five. Shane Lobb's going to be here one-on-one -on -one with number 10. I'd expect he'd look his way. Oh, it looks like he'll be. Oh, oh man. Through a just direct interception. 
That was number 33, Jake Fisher. Well, I don't know if that was their plan, but he certainly called that. I mean, the way you're calling this game, what numbers do I need to pay up for a lottery <laughs> ticket for tomorrow? All right, this is... If I knew that, I'd split it with you. <laughs> Power play left. I'd expect so. No, I'm throwing it. Complete. Wow. Well, I see they put number five back in there. 46 6, 75 seconds left in the half. It's been the third time they've thrown it tonight. Yeah. Well, that's the one benefit to running the ball so much is. When you do throw it that one time, you often have a guy running wide right, open. Right, he's, yeah, because the, the defense is focused on the running play. Mm -hmm. They're not looking for the pass. And then the flip side of that is you have those teams who run it because they can only run it. <laughs> Much nicer of a kick. Yeah, it was. Sam Smith with a good catch. Finds an opening. Oh, he's got the speed. He he's might gone. go. On. He might go all the way. And that hey. is a Comets touchdown. Yep. That was an incredible return. Yep. I see no flag, so. Does that make that the cleanest play of the evening? <laughs> I, I think I just heard uh, caught at the 13. That was an 87 yard run back for Sam Smith. 87 yard yeah, kickoff that, return. That burst of acceleration when he hit the hole and then went flying down the sideline. That's. If we can work that into the offense a little bit, it'll be a... Uh, I'm out of breath for it, man. Here we're going for two. Last time we ran that sweep play and it didn't work. Go for pass. And he's... Oh. Just couldn't quite keep a hold of it. Yeah, just to show you how fast things happen, 14 seconds off the clock. That's mm -hmm. it. So now Culver's going to receive a kick. Kind of curious what their plans are offensively. Take another deep shot, perhaps? Maybe. It worked out well for him. Yep. Of course, we do have Rock Wolf back out of the field. Yep. We got two timeouts. Maybe you throw in a counter play in there. Of course, that power left with number 40 has been getting you good yardage. Large, large chunks at a time. I don't know, though, that it's been getting large enough to count on that if you want another score before right. the half. I, I don't know. With 61 seconds in a lead like this, do you push for another touchdown? Well, you want to go into halftime with a 35 point favor, don't you? I guess that's one way to look at it. Well, yeah. Uh, 
because you're a point shy of it right now. It's getting field goal range. <laughs> well, I'm no. I don't know. Dude. I, don't I don't know if they, they have, have a kicker. kicker. Yeah. Tim Lee will be kicking for the Comets. A little bit of a wonky bounce on it. And we've got a tackle back there at uh, 33. That was a great job by Grant Hickel. It was. Oh, I think cutting back into Sam Smith was the mistake. He should have just <laughs> tried pushing to the outside. Timeout Culver. Is that play, that and the kick return, taking some time off? Yeah. I'll tell you, that's the other negative thing to this T, wing T, double wing. You just don't have the dynamic offense to get big chunk of yards and to run a no huddle offense and to you know right. to have a two minute offense you have a you have like an eight minute offense like right we, we want to take our time and let the plays develop See Coach Eric though telling Jesse, stay back. So you put him, oh, 20 yards away from the football here. Yeah. Last thing you want here is a, another deep pass. So line Jesse up. Yep, pass play. They got three guys wanting wide open. And he just throws that yeah. one too far. Yep. We had Evan Howard going out to cover that receiver. I'm not sure. Not sure he could get there. I see uh, mm -hmm. Coach Ulrich talking to Caden Webb. We've seen him make some fast plays. Mm -hmm. Forty-three seconds left in the half. And here's a counter play. That's number nope. 24. He running. might be broken loose. Oh, Rockwolf going out to try to stop race. him. Oh, and he'll get him out of bounds. <sighs> Not before he eats a whole chunk of the yeah. field, though. Well, now you have a one timeout left for Culver in 34 seconds. You've probably got a good three plays here. Maybe four, depending on if you throw it or not. Right. Ball down on the nine yard line. There's a pass play. And you wide got open in the end zone. Well, that answers my question. Yes, you put another one on the board. <laughs> I mean, if I was in Coach Zayner's shoes, I probably would too. So he can start the second half, but I would assume he's going to put the JV in, have a right. running clock, 
see how it goes for a little bit. Thinking 40 to the left. Oh yeah, that's, that was, would have been my guess. So looking at, okay, the scoreboard doesn't tell the entire story of what we've seen out here tonight, mm -hmm. I don't feel like. No. Um, so Culver has given up a lot of penalties and a lot of bad penalties. And right. And, and really, the the comments have, have, you know, they've earned those touchdowns. Mm -hmm. And honestly, uh, they earned at least one more they, that didn't happen because yeah. of that fumble. Uh, you know, uh, yeah, so they, I don't know that putting that for Culver putting the JV line out there is a good play. Right. Now, again, I could be way wrong. And mm -hmm. once again, you could put them in early in the half and see how it goes. Yeah. Um, and well, Cole, Culver will be receiving, so it'll be a running clock from the start. Right. So then you can milk some more time. and Now, given that the running clock rule is new this year and that I haven't, you know, that, that's, <laughs> not, that's not the rule book that I have to study for my sports. Um, <laughs> so if the team with the deficit overcomes that, you know, they bring it within 30, does it go back to a standard clock? It will. Okay. Yeah. Which makes it you know, just one more way that it's a little different from years past yep. where when the coaches have agreed on a one running yep. clock, yeah, it that's stays it, running yeah. clock. A lot shorter of a kickoff. Oh, and it gets a good bounce. And Grant Hickle got a hold of it. It looked like his cleat slipped out from under him. Of course, there's plenty of time for Kasson to get another touchdown. I mean, you put Smith down the sideline. <laughs> right? Yeah, it only took him 15 seconds mm -hmm. last time. You notice that that kickoff didn't go anywhere near Sam Smith yep, this yep. time. <laughs> Can't say I blame him either. Fool me once, shame on you. And they're going to give it to him. Unfortunately, he just can't yeah, find a hole Kasten in that play. does not have a timeout. I don't think they do. I, I think they've used them all. So Coach Slocum's going to let it go to halftime. And yep. We've got a festive halftime here for homecoming. Absolutely. We're going to uh, run some words from our sponsors while we switch over to the field mic, and we'll be right back. Stay tuned for uh, Comets Homecoming here at halftime on Cast and TV on RTC TV4. First Federal Savings Bank has provided mortgage loans for over 50 years, and now we're offering commercial lending. Are you looking to purchase commercial real estate, equipment, or open a business line of credit? First Federal Savings Bank is your locally owned community bank for all your business banking needs. Contact Lindy Breeden, our business lending expert, to take the worry out of your business banking. And remember, we don't want to be the biggest bank, just the best bank. At Oliver Ford, we reach beyond your dealership expectation help you in making fun decisions on your new vehicle, or let it try our professional touch by our service and parts department. We are the only Indiana new and used car dealership that has won the President Award 17 times. With over 100 years of sales experience, we're here to hold your hand from start to finish with no pressure or gimmicks. Contact us today. At Co-Alliance Propane, we treat our customers like neighbors because, well, that's what we are. When you trust Co-Alliance Propane as your seriously local propane provider, you're trusting a team of professionals who live, work, and watch the game from right across the county, not the country. A team that's close by and seriously dedicated to your safety and providing the best service possible. Find out more about Co-Alliance Propane's seriously local service and how you can get 50 gallons of propane free at CoAlliancePropane.com. At Co-Alliance, we understand the importance of community. After all, we've been farmer-owned since the 1920s. 
And now that we're a part of your community, we want to become your total agronomy solutions provider. CoAlliance offers the latest in ag technology for your operation. From field scouting and fertilizers to premium seed and precision agriculture, we can help take your operation to the next level. Put the resources of your local cooperative to work. Contact CoAlliance today.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, the post-halftime stretching is winding down. Just uh, under a minute left. And uh, we'll start the second half action here. Congratulations to uh, all of our homecoming court and our homecoming king and queen. And uh, hope the uh, students have a safe and fun time with the student activities here after the football game winds up. Always a big part of the high school experience. Yep. yep. You know, I, uh, we were just talking to Coach Slocum's son there, assistant coach. We're extremely fortunate right now because it is cold outside. <laughs> yeah. It's, <laughs> it's always a little nicer in the press box. Mm -hmm. yeah, as our Taylor Duncan is upstairs on the roof of the press box listening to us yak. Probably just shaking his head going, yeah, you jerks. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully he's wearing a couple pairs of socks, a couple shirts. Well, I'll tell you, uh, last year when we went to Knox, Knox has a very nice press box. Yep. It's a two-story affair. And, uh, we now, was there field turf? I don't think it was turf. I don't think it was turf last year, but uh, they they gave us the second story of that press box all nice. to ourselves. But to get the because the camera was in the press box, which was nice for Taylor, but of course to get the swing, mm -hmm. we had to take the windows out, so it was just a big pneumonia yep. hole. <laughs> now, now I know Knox isn't uh, allowing RTC to go up there this year. Yeah, there's been a few schools. Yep. I think we talked about this last time. There's yep. been a few schools. They feel like. Uh, Allowing their uh, games to be streamed affects their attendance. I, I don't know. We haven't seen that here at Caston. I don't know if it's that small town, hometown yeah. support system that we have. Yep. Uh, a lot of our viewership comes from people who are just not able to make it to the game. Um, I know when we had the, the metrics available to us, mm -hmm. uh, using, oh, a short kick on there. Um, we saw a lot of, like, Florida for our basketball games and stuff. We saw a lot of Florida IPs and things watching mm -hmm. our streams. So nice. Uh, those aren't folks who are likely to be in our stands on any given <laughs> evening. Well, this is the time of year to head down to Florida. Yeah. Well, finally, it was once again 90 it degrees was 90 all 90 week. degrees on Monday. And Tuesday. Yeah. I, I remember that Tuesday speed day workout. That was awful. Matter of fact, Tuesday, it was hot enough on Tuesday that um, our athletic trainer, Jordan, she was out, you know, helmets off every now and again. Mm -hmm. Sam Smith there on that carry, yep. got a few got yards. A few. Tell you, I got those breadsticks and they're uh, taunting me right now, so if you <laughs> hear me chewing. <laughs> It's always a, uh, it's always an interesting struggle trying to actually make it to the concession stand during yep. halftime, and then have enough time to come back, back here. Yeah, yep. I was pushing it. And call false start there on number nine, Tim Brolt. Penalty against the Comets false start on the offense. Back to number five. I'll learn the names, but the season will be coming to an end by then. <laughs> nice pass completion there. Jess is going to be, be first close. Down. Yeah. The near ref here is signaling. Yep, waving him down. Uh, it looks like we've got a defender here who's yep. being real slow to get back up. Holding the knee, that's not a good sign. Nope. Well, that's going to give us an official's timeout. 
take this moment to step away for a word from our sponsors. Stay tuned to Caston and Culver Football here on Caston TV on RTC TV4. I don't think of this as a high school weight room. It's more like a high school classroom. I'm learning how to manage my time here. I'm learning that it's important to have goals and that it takes persistence and commitment to reach them. And I'm learning that the best way to lead is by example. Indiana High School Sports. They're more than just a game. Come and see me play. <laughs> Want to know what I like best about playing basketball for my high school? I like it because it's a place where my friends get to see me play. I like it because I'm playing for someone besides myself. I'm playing for everybody in my school and every person in my community. Indiana High School Sports. They're more than just a game. Come and see me play. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We were just talking right before we came yep. back about uh, it looks like Culver is, in fact, running their varsity defense. Might be some JV rotation in there, though. Yeah, that varsity defense stopped the comments right back at the line of scrimmage. All right, what I miss? We're talking about a first down, and I thought we just <laughs> got the first down. So Smith's, yep, awfully far back. Send him in motion. You're going to run him on the sweet play. Ooh, Ooh you got. That was a hard five yep. yard. But this defense is known to watch for Smith now. Yep. And once again, it's a defense that trains against a running offense yep. constantly. Now they're going to run Landon the other way. Landon bouncing off his own lineman. Oh. Oh, and gets covered up down here at the 25. That's a first down. Let's see, he put, give a shoulder to number 24, Junior. We've called his name a couple times. I didn't expect the junior here for Culver's defense to. I think, uh, thinking back, I'm pretty sure I saw Landon Schaefer bounce off of Sam Duvall <laughs> trying to get past the line. Long pass. Mm, and too over. far to bounds, and we're going to get a pass interference call. Oh, no, they're pointing back up the field. Surely they're not going to call that intentional grounding. Wait. Oh. Well, that's not the kind of pass interference we want to see. <laughs> Yep, and as our friends here at the other side of the press box point out, the clock's still going to run. Yep. It only stops for injuries, scores. What was the third one? Uh, Official timeouts. Official timeouts, yeah. Which is usually injuries. Yep. 
Send it over to Rockwolf. He's looking for an opening. He's pushed out of bounds. Over, over good, by the Culver bench. Had a good chunk of yards there. Yeah, unfortunately, he had 15 extra yards to make up. Mm -hmm. And we have Smith here out wide with Shane Lobb, I wonder. Yep, look this way. Ooh, nearly intercepted. Mm. He's gonna do some push-ups for that one. <laughs> Nearly eight minutes going here in this quarter. Yep. Now it looks like we have Smith back in the backfield. We're going to run it here with him. Goes to cut in the middle. Oh, and he's breaking a couple tackles. Whoa, he's got some space. How are they? Did they tell me they threw a flag on that? Alex, how, how was that a legal tackle? Mm. Well, we have a uh, an official's timeout over here. Uh, the fella who was trying to sling Sam Smith around got injured himself in the sling, so we're going to step away for a word from our sponsors. You're watching Comets Football on Casting TV on RTC TV4. Hi, I'm John Oliver with some great news if you're shopping for a pre-owned F-150 or Ford Escape. Two of America's best-selling vehicles, and right now we have an incredible lineup to choose from. These are all local trades, so the history is no mystery. No Canadian units here. F-150s and Escapes, all priced to sell, all Oliver Ford Lincoln certified. So get more for your money and more for your trade with Oliver Ford Lincoln in Plymouth. Simplify your banking with a Simply Free checking account from First Federal Savings Bank. At First Federal Savings Bank, we appreciate your referrals. Refer your friends to open a Simply Free checking account. When your friend opens a checking account, you can both receive a free gift. It's easy as one, two, three. Simply Free checking from First Federal Savings Bank, a simpler way to bank. And remember, we don't want to be the biggest bank, just the best bank. Hey, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so we have uh, number five, Tucker Fisher, being helped off of the field here. He was, I believe he was the one who was tackling Sam Smith, and it uh, appears that he got the worst of that. Helmets down here on the Cavs' 10-yard line. Yep, and we'll get the clock rolling. And they'll hand it to Smith again. He's looking to make a hole. He, oh. he stopped just short. Sam Smith gets it down to the one-yard line. Second goal, go from the one for the Comets. Now is going to be a good time to find out if they get a score here, will it continue to be a running clock? Yeah, that's. Yep. 
In my mind, the idea of a dynamic running clock is conceptually neat. I think it's mm -hmm. the right thing to do, but is that the rule? Oh, well. Run the option play. Ooh, shut down at the line of scrimmage. Third and goal from the one. Let's see if my math is correct. Castle would have to get a touchdown and either make the field goal and get a two point conversion. It's just a touchdown puts you down 36 points. Yes. And the extra points are something we haven't been successful with. There's Smith. There's Smith into the end zone. So do we go for two, which is something we've been unsuccessful with, or do we go for the... Field? I don't know if you even have a field goal kicker. I don't know. My guess is no. Of course, the clock is going to keep running. Oh, and we're going to get it. Landon Schaefer keeping it, taking care of business himself. Yep, he's waving to stop the clock while well, they did score, so. I wonder if number five's coming back in for Culver at quarterback. With the way he was helped off the field, I would say no. Yeah, I, but you know, Rock Wolf was mm -hmm. helped pretty, pretty heavily off the field. Of course, not knowing what kind of injury it was, but he it looked like uh, number five was was that Fisher, I think. Yep. It looked like he was he was. Putting some weight on it. It wasn't mm -hmm. like when Aiden Sarver was right. helped off the field, i.e. he was carried. <laughs> but, of course, Culver runs the ball so much, the clock's going to keep running naturally based on their offense. Right. Under a minute left here in the third. Kick off back. Oh, to boy. Oh. That Smith? That was Smith. Saved it. Yeah, Saved he did. Saved the return there. So that was uh, Damian Sullivan yep. again, and he was building that head of steam. Yep. And he was about to run down the sidelines like Smith. Oh, the clock's still running here. I'm guessing they'll just let this be the end of the quarter. I think so. So it looks like I was wrong earlier. I thought the clock would would uh, go back to being a non-running clock. Well, again, we've we've had a lot of questions on that procedure. We mm -hmm. is uh, it's new. We we had that we had that. Uh, 35-point deficit reach really early in the Pioneer game. Yep. And we thought it would start. Right, and it didn't. So, uh, and we also didn't know that um, this new rule allows JV to play an extra quarter. Right, So, which allows JV to play a whole running clock half. Yep. Which, when you think about how many fewer plays there are once the clock starts mm -hmm. running, it, it kind of makes sense. Yep. 
<clears throat> so if all goes well, this quarter could literally take 12 minutes, even though a typical fourth quarter <laughs> in, a, in a football game takes about 50. Sorry, <laughs> say an hour, yeah. <laughs> So the clock will, what are we seeing here? This is their single wing offense that I saw during the off season. Okay. Looks like they're copying what Rensselaer did against them where they, uh, they'll um, take the quarterback back into the shotgun, have the fullback up and you see him with his hands up. Yeah. Very deceptive offense. You see that's called the spinner series. Uh -huh. Quarterback takes step spins, and you have the two backs going opposite directions. So when it's done well, it's it very says this is a shell game. Where's the good. football? Watch, watch Rensselaer. You can YouTube it. It's the whole game is up. When Rensselaer played in state in 2015, uh -huh. oh, it was very good. Of course, this is the um, – predecessor of the wing T this is the guy that created the wing T put this offense in with that old option offense and you get the wing T you see it's very right. deceptive and we do have a penalty flag down right it surprise, looks like a block in the back Right, it was a block on, in the back against the yep. Cavaliers. Um, I saw, I, don't, I think it was Evan Howard. I, he was uh, starting to make a break towards the ball carrier, and he got shoved in the back. Tell you, I'm very excited to see this offense. This is a. Uh, it's something different. Yeah. If I was in charge of the play calling, this is probably the <laughs> offense I would run. Well, it's a good time to try. If if this is something you've been considering, mm -hmm. why not? See that? Uh, there's the trap play. So we got enough for our first down on it. No, we just barely passed the original. Oh, <laughs> that's right. There's a penalty on that. <laughs> I, I saw him pass a uh, saw him pass an end of the chain. Of course, I don't have film on Culver, so I don't know if they've ran this before this season or if this is the first time they're breaking it out. You don't see number 10 or number 5 out there, so your traditional quarterback has become a fullback, number 46. Gotcha. So this is more. This is even more of a run-oriented offense than what we saw before. And this looks like a mass, JV squad's going to come out. Mass substitution here. Yeah. Look at the difference in size between their <laughs> varsity line yep. and the JV line. It almost looks like, in comparison, it looks like a squad of junior hires coming out. And we're going to go back to the T. And run the power play. Now here we're taking some of our seniors out. This was a kind of a packed night right before we went on air. It was yep. senior night for the Comets. And then homecoming. Homecoming. And 
which senior night was scheduled for the Knox game, as I recall. And uh, but uh, once again, Mama Shanla won't be able to be here mm. with her treatments ongoing, and so uh, it was rearranged to. Oh, so we did two and one. Yeah, it was okay. a busy night. Yeah. And, of course, our thoughts and prayers are with the Shane mm -hmm. Lobb family yep. as they go through this. Ooh. I'm surprised nope. they didn't call that. That was uh, 67. That's one of the Hickle twins. Yep. I'm really surprised that the uh, sideline official on the other yep. end didn't see, didn't yep. call that. We were about fourth and six for the Cavs here. Power left. He had put down hard at the line of scrimmage. Mm -hmm. So we have first and ten for the Comets. No. Ah, we're letting the JV offense play, but it looks like we're bringing the varsity defense back <laughs> out. Probably a good call on the part of Culver. And we've got a Culver timeout. We're going to step away here for uh, this word from our sponsors on Cast and TV on RTC TV4. Simplify your banking with a simply free checking account from First Federal Savings Bank. All it takes is $50 to open the account with no minimum balance and no monthly service fees. For a limited time, you will also receive a free gift just for opening the account. And with Instant Issue, we can give you a debit card right when you open your account, giving you immediate access to your funds. Simply free checking from First Federal Savings Bank, a simpler way to bank. And remember, we don't want to be the biggest bank, just the best bank. That made a... Uh... Yeah, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, that uh, we were just talking oh, off air yeah. about... Um, with it being homecoming week, we had all sorts of festivities. Yep. And we had uh, Chuck Smith, uh, yep. father of... A lot of them. Well... <laughs> Six but, kids? Or, uh, Seven. Yeah, I don't remember. Anyway, but Chris Smith, who was injured last year uh, for the Comets. Sweet play. Uh, anyway, he would capture the picture of uh, the entire arc of a rainbow. Mm -hmm. Sam Smith making it to about the 50-yard line yep. before he was forced out. That'll move the chain gig. Anyway, yeah, that made it to uh, in big regional news. Yeah, didn't indie it? news, I think. <laughs> Looks like they're spotting that at the uh, 46. I guess in comparison to the whole field, it's close to the 50. <laughs> Run the option play. Oh, and he got wrapped up right up at the line of scrimmage. In belly to back suplex. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Look like Brock Lesnar out there. <laughs> <laughs> Under five minutes left in the game here. Cavs 54, Comets 20. That trips to the left. Option right. Oh, oh what a man. fumble. Covered up a couple yards behind the original line of scrimmage by uh, Dylan Gearhart. Mm -hmm. So a third and long. You know, I wonder uh, 
what these situations late in the game would be if Kasson didn't shoot themselves in the foot all the time like this. But being a young team, you're going to have a lot of growing pains. Yeah. Yeah, when I, and when I look at this crop of seniors. And there's Smith around the edge. And oh, oh, he'll be in the end zone again. Oh, 24. That Sullivan yep. pushed him out of bounds inside the 10 yard line. As soon as uh, Smith starts running sideways and starts running north and south here on the field, he's. Yeah, he. He's quick. Number 24 to take a pretty good angle to catch him. Again, he, he ran cross country for me one year, and he was all right at that. He's just a, he's a natural athlete. Yep. But I'll tell you, he ran track a few seasons, and he was a phenomenal mm -hmm. sprinter. Mm -hmm. Wish you can get him back out there, don't you? Yeah, he, he has a love for the game of baseball, though, so. That was uh, Landon Schaefer keeping it, taking care of business, moving it up the field, down the field, towards the end zone. <laughs> As we're here, getting close to the final two minutes, two and a half. So next week, it'll be the Winnemac crew. Then we'll be back for Knox. Be out. Is Knox one of the schools that also doesn't let their information on uh, max preps? Yep. So it might As not. Smith, is that his fourth touchdown tonight? Uh, I think you might be correct on that. I think Landon might have one maybe. Thought he ran one in. No, I think it's Ben Smith. I think Landon did, would, kept a hold of it for the two-point conversion. <laughs> that was a little bit offside. Yep. <laughs> so that I move him up a yard. In fairness, the the refs let uh let Hickle get away with yep. one about yep. as, about as egregious. Number twenty one, Caden Webb. Valiant effort there. He's he's another one who once he gets going, he can move. Mm -hmm. And for no bigger than he looks out there, we've seen him take down some yeah. really big guys. Yep. Well, just under a minute left here in the ball game. This would be a perfect time to attempt an onside kick for Cast and see it. I don't know how much you practice it a week. Probably no more than 10 minutes is my guess. Special teams, especially in high school, is one of those aspects of the game that goes untouched. Right. Especially when you're an average to below average team because you're trying to spend so much time teaching the offense and getting, you know, the routine set in and the development. Then you take time away from other parts of the game. Right. And, and again... <coughs> not just high school but then small school high school mm. where your special teams are also your offense <laughs> and oh by the way also your defense yep. it's not like once you get up to college in the NFL mm -hmm. where you know or even these guys are just on the kickoff yeah. return team or even 4 5 6 a here in Indiana right where you can go to Carmel High School and have guys that play one position right That's number 46. He's tr trekked a couple of comments before yeah. he was taken down himself. Still has that ripped jersey on yep. from early in the game. You know, I, I know you expect to see some holes in your jerseys from pad to pad. Mm -hmm. Those get stitched up. That's a lot of stitching yep. the mom needs to do. Yep. 
Might be better off just buying him a new one. <laughs> so we got the JV back out here. 20 seconds left. You let them run a play or you... Uh, uh, if they don't get to the line real quick, they're not going to have time regardless. Yeah, and that'll do it. Yeah, but that's going to wind it up. <coughs> Final score here tonight. Cavaliers 54, Comets 26. And not the cleanest no. ball game. Not the cleanest ball game, but one of the more exciting Comets football games so far this season. So Started off very entertaining. Absolutely. Absolutely, as we see team captain Hunter Schaefer here at the end of the line. Yep. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I will step away for some words from our sponsors here, and then uh, hopefully Coach Slocum will come up and talk to us for a few minutes. Stay tuned. You're watching Comets Football on Caston TV on RTC TV4. At First Federal Savings Bank, we enjoy helping first-time homebuyers. And with our premier first-time homebuyer program, there's no private mortgage insurance cost. Only as little as 5% down is required for this program. Talk with one of our experienced mortgage lenders and let us help you purchase your first home. And remember, we don't want to be the biggest bank, just the best bank. At First Federal Savings Bank, we offer a wide variety of services for our customers. We offer a variety of deposit products, such as personal and business accounts. We pride ourselves in being one of the top mortgage lenders in Indiana. We offer commercial lending and business checking to help with your business banking needs. Through LPL Financial, our financial services department is here to help you with your financial planning needs. Come see us today and see how our family can help your family. First Federal Savings Bank has provided mortgage loans for over 50 years, and now we're offering commercial lending. Are you looking to purchase commercial real estate, equipment, or open a business line of credit? First Federal Savings Bank is your locally owned community bank for all your business banking needs. Contact Lindy Breeden, our business lending expert, to take the worry out of your business banking. And remember, we don't want to be the biggest bank, just the best bank. At Oliver Ford, we reach beyond your dealership expectation, help you in making fun decisions on your new vehicle, or let it try our professional touch by our service and parts department. We are the only Indiana new and used car dealership that has won the President Award 17 times. With over 100 years of sales experience, we're here to hold your hand from start to finish with no pressure or gimmicks. Contact us today. At Co-Alliance Propane, we treat our customers like neighbors because, well, that's what we are. When you trust Co-Alliance Propane as your seriously local propane provider, you're trusting a team of professionals who live, work, and watch the game from right across the county, not the country. A team that's close by and seriously dedicated to your safety and providing the best service possible. Find out more about Co-Alliance Propane's seriously local service and how you can get 50 gallons of propane free at CoAlliancePropane.com. At Co-Alliance, we understand the importance of community. After all, we've been farmer-owned since the 1920s. And now that we're a part of your community, we want to become your total agronomy solutions provider. Co-Alliance offers the latest in ag technology for your operation. From field scouting and fertilizers to premium seed and precision agriculture, we can help take your operation to the next level. Put the resources of your local cooperative to work. Contact Co-Alliance today. There's been a lot of talk lately about net neutrality. At RTC, our customers receive the full and open internet, and nothing less. We are not the gatekeeper, toll operator, or curator. A free and open internet has been the single biggest driver of innovation over the last generation, and we want that engine of innovation to live on in our customers. If you ever have a question about your internet service, give RTC a call. We are here for you. I don't think of this as a high school weight room. It's more like a high school classroom. I'm learning how to manage my time here. I'm learning that it's important to have goals and that it takes persistence and commitment to reach them. And I 
learning that the best way to lead is by example. Indiana High School Sports. They're more than just a game. Come and see me play. <laughs> Want to know what I like best about playing basketball for my high school? I like it because it's a place where my friends get to see me play. I like it because I'm playing for someone besides myself. I'm playing for everybody in my school and every person in my community. Indiana High School Sports. They're more than just a game. Come and see me play. Slow download, constant buffering, Wi-Fi dead zone? Let RTC help. The customer support team at RTC Communications is here to help you with your internet connectivity. Hi, I'm Bonnie, one of the support team members here at RTC. For a small fee, RTC offers a Wi-Fi health check where we will evaluate your in-home Wi-Fi network and assist you with common issues. See what RTC can do for you. Give us a call today. Enjoy full screen television viewing of the new RTC TV4 family of networks anywhere you are with our new Roku channel. Simply purchase a Roku device from RTC or any Roku retailer, connect to your in-home Wi-Fi, then download the RTC TV4 channel. It's that easy. Watch all of our live channels 24-7 for free or subscribe to view all of our videos at your convenience. The RTC TV4 channel on Roku, another great service from RTC. Neighbors help each other. It's how our community works. And it's how we do business at RTC. We know you count on us for fiber internet, TV, and phone service backed by friendly local support. Your hard-earned dollars stay right here as we invest in our community, our people, and smart technology. RTC Fiber Communications. We're your hometown communications provider working hard to be a good neighbor. At First Federal Savings Bank, we offer a wide variety of services for our customers. We offer a variety of deposit products, such as personal and business accounts. We pride ourselves in being one of the top mortgage lenders in Indiana. We offer commercial lending and business checking to help with your business banking needs. Through LPL Financial, our financial services department is here to help you with your financial planning needs. Come see us today and see how our family can help your family. Whatever phone fits your style, RTC Fiber Communications can save you money when you switch to VoIP. VoIP is a phone service that leverages the power of the internet to save you money on your monthly phone bill. Same great service at a fraction of the cost. Contact RTC today to find out more about this money-saving offer. Online at www.rtc1.com. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Coach Slocum is making his way up to the press box as we speak. Here's the man of the hour right now. Just be a moment as he gets a headset on. Coach, thanks for coming up and joining us. Uh, some really great action out here on the on the field tonight. Um, you know, just kind of walk us through what your thoughts are. Well, we had a, we had a lot of things going on tonight. We honored uh, the people in our community that are, are battling cancer. Uh, our guys wore special uh, pink T-shirts to remind them of that. Uh, Hunter Schaefer, our senior captain, uh, was able to get a touchdown today. Absolutely. That was uh, wonderful. So, yep. Yeah, so, uh, and then uh, we moved senior night to tonight. So, a lot going on. Uh, but one thing that didn't happen was we didn't match the intensity that uh, Culver played with. They're a big uh, physical football team. Now, we did some good things. <laughs> Yeah, um, well, yeah. I, I just, just uh, the one thing that uh, 
Alex Corner and I talked about a lot tonight is the the sheer athleticism of a couple, namely uh, Sam Smith and uh, Landon Schaefer. And that's not to take away from anybody else on the field tonight. We saw great plays by a lot of guys, but just a lot of that forward momentum seemed to happen through those two young men tonight. Yeah, they they played well. Landon, being a freshman, of course, uh, made some mistakes. Well, and he wasn't the only one, obviously, but. Uh, Sam Smith's a dynamic player. He's a sophomore. He's only going to get better uh, because he's he works hard. He's smart. He's an instinctive football player, and he's coachable. Uh, and he's already a good football player, but I, I expect great things from him. I believe he had at least two touchdowns tonight, uh, maybe I, three. Yeah, I think he. Yeah, I think he might even have yeah. three. So uh, Landon Schaefer, uh, we have him at quarterback for a reason because he's a good athlete. Uh, it's just tough when you don't get to play at the JV level in your first uh, varsity game or, or action after high school or junior high is in this conference. And, right. Uh, he struggles, as we expect, but, again, good enough to put some boards, uh, points on the board against a pretty good defense, a good physical defense. So uh, hopefully we carry that into Winnemac next week uh, and we continue to get better. Absolutely. Well, Coach, once again, I, I, I thank you for your time. Uh, the inspirational words that you uh, shared today at the pep rally, uh, it's always an honor to watch you work out here, and uh, I know that you pour your heart into these guys. Uh, next week, you guys will be covered by RTC. Sadly, it won't be by myself because uh, Winamax is an RTC school. So uh, you go back and watch that commentary. It's going to be slanted a little more towards the yeah. Winamax well, side. We're going to miss you. Uh, one thing I'd like to thank this community. Uh, they're outstanding, uh, supporting our not just our football team, but all the athletics that we have here at Caston. I want to take my hat off to the varsity soccer team who won the Hoosier North Athletic Conference outright yesterday by beating Winnemac. And then I want to offer my prayers to our school board member, uh, Bruce Kress, who had a medical emergency at tonight's game. So our prayers are with him and his family, Absolutely. and I hope that uh, outcome uh, it comes out in the positive. Absolutely. Well, Coach, once again, thank you for all you do. Thank you for coming up and talking to me. Well, thanks for having me as always. Thanks for covering the comments. And, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to wrap up our coverage here tonight. Um, again, remember to uh, keep your eye on rtc4.com to watch all of your local athletic team's coverage. Um, and tune in next Friday for the comments at Winnemac High School. And... Uh, Thanks for joining us. Uh, this is RTC TV4. I'm Blair Zimmerman. We had uh, Taylor Duncan up on the camera, and Alex Korn had to step on out. So until next time, this is RTC TV4.